Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It's time again for the latest Conquest release from Parabellum Games. Today we've got the Spire's Avatar, and if you're not sure what they are, they are these crazy long-limbed, basically full-time frontline soldiers. I'm not sure how many pieces we're going to get for options in here. I haven't had a chance to pop it open and find out. You do have enough to build three of them, but the thing is, these guys are actually on cavalry stands. They're big models. Very tall, lanky, just funky looking models. And I am very excited because, honestly, the more we get out of the spires, the crazier it seems to get. So right off the bat, uh, I notice this is a new type of box. A little bit flimsier cardboard, if that's a word. Actually, I really like and have been keeping all of my Conquest boxes because they were a bit sturdier and I did like the two-part box and it was easy to, you know, carry things around the store inside. Big cavalry bases. I want to say they're 60 millimeter. Maybe they're 15. I don't know the difference. I'll be quiet now. Unit card there. Very fancy. Almost like samurai looking hairdo. Okay. A random shoulder pad. I'm guessing that there's too many of one and not enough of this, so hopefully I don't lose that. Okay, what do we got in here? Well, we have two frames. We have an A and a B, so they're not repeats. You do have command options. That's good. I want to say that everybody has these big glaives. I'm not sure what those are going to be for. We'll find that out. This looks like part of the standard, I'm guessing. I could be completely wrong. I'm wondering if no, the legs don't have any kind of marking. One of the nice things I've noticed about the plastic releases for Conquest is they've had a good run of making sure that they tell you where the pieces go. So you can see this is a part B right here. I'm not sure if most of the time those are able to be clipped off. Here's the part A. It looks like for the standard we're going to need part C. Looks like part of the head with those horns. I wonder if it's a front and a back. I'm not sure yet. We'll find that out. This shoulder pad here is a C. So I do like that they're labeled like that. That is quite handy. Okay, maybe these are the actual shoulders. That's the B. That's an A. So I don't know what the other one was. We could have checked. This is crazy. Maybe that's part of the standard too. I honestly have no idea. It's going to be a bit of a Let's see where everything ends up. There are various faces. I'm thinking these little, I don't know, bean-shaped pieces, or maybe they're torsos? And this looks like, yeah, that's the waist and the lower torso where the legs connect. I don't know if the legs actually matter which one goes where. Doesn't seem like it. All right, well, this doesn't look that bad. Um, probably the biggest issue is going to be all those little connection points still not as bad as like when the spire archers having to get those individual arrows that was kind of a pain uh, but this looks doable so give me a sec we're going to get these guys all cut out we'll put some together and hopefully we can walk you guys through it as well so sit tight and we'll be back with some finished models Alright guys, so let's talk how to build the Avatar. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the skirt waist piece. You're going to have these two triangles like this. And as far as I can tell, having played around with everything, it doesn't really matter which torso you put with which legs. In fact, I'd even go so far as to argue that it doesn't even matter which letters you use. Now, yes, there are letters as I slowly twist that around. You can see there's an A on this one. There's a D on this one. And are they opposite legs? No, they're the same. Okay, let me grab some that don't match. Just to prove a point. Okay, here's an A and here's a D. And after having glued them on, your model will still be able to stand upright. It might be in an odd pose. If you wanted it to be traipsing or something like that. So there is some give on how you want to customize the legs um, when you do get them glued together. 
they should be able to stand up quite on their own. You do end up with four pairs of legs, though. We're going to save that one for later. I don't want to spoil it yet. So this is just a match pair. Uh, if you really wanted to experiment, there's no reason not to. After you've got your lower half all put together, you're going to need the little P-shaped torso. A little kidney bean. There's a cut down the middle. I believe that is to indicate the front. I could be making that up. And you would never know. Basically, you're going to want to glue that on there. And then you're going to find the two pieces that build the upper torso. So this is going to make the neck and the connection point for the arms and then finally that torso as well. After all that, you're going to grab a back shoulder piece. You'll see there, there is a letter B. There are corresponding shoulder pads for each back armor piece. They don't go on anything. They're not modular. You need to make sure you've got the correct letters. So this is a B, this is a B. Everything will work. And I want to say, yeah, the B set, that was a C maybe. The B set is the one that had the extra right piece and the missing left piece. That's what that resin one is for. So just so you know, you'll see there's that big plus shape right there on the back. That is going to be where the torso right here is going to set. I absolutely recommend that you glue this in first before you bother to glue the arms into whatever positions or the shoulder pads. Let's talk shoulder pads for a moment. You'll notice this is a right shoulder pad. You see that big square spot? That's going to be for the little blinged pieces that are going to go on them. But wait a minute. If I look at the left, you'll see there's a smaller one. That's okay because they are different parts. I went ahead somewhere if I can find where I put them as I search desperately. So you can see these already have them attached. Set those down for a sec. I want to show you the back. So you can see what I'm talking about. You have only enough for the kit. There's not a lot of extras in that regard. So you can see here, one's got a long connecting spot. The other's got a tiny connecting spot. So be aware of those before you glue anything on. I also forgot you're going to need to put the skirt armor. You have a front loincloth. It's nice and dangly. There are only three options there, so you're going to use all those. But then there are the back options as well. And that's going to sit, you can see here on the back, those well-sculpted glutes, right? And it's just going to go right at the top. There's a nice curvature and indentation to show you where that's going to go. So the only thing left at that point would be the arms. Now, I was showing you guys earlier, the arms are going to be lined up and matched up with the letter. I think that's B. It would probably help if it's not upside down. Yeah. So you're going to want to make sure that those match up. If you don't match them up, you're going to be kind of awkward because there already is a hand attached. There are two sets of arms, though, that do not have an extra hand on there. And there are a couple of pointing arms as well. So you have some options in terms of pokes. And put our finished model here on the camera for a moment. We didn't talk about the head either. So the head, there are a couple of choices. I went with the most plain one on that one, but you do have a few options. This one already has the face glued on. Basically, it's going to sit in that indentation of the neck like that. So it's not going to be able to turn or anything like that. It's going to be kind of locked in straightforward, but they are pretty fabulous in terms of the details. There weren't a whole lot of extra faces available either. I was a bit bummed out about that. I think the fact that these guys can be used as mainstay troop choices really kind of begs for them to have a lot more options, I feel. Uh, it is a neat looking kit. It's just so unique and spindly and different than everything else. And let me grab some other models so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so I grabbed a couple other Spire models to show you guys what I'm talking about here. So here is a basic warrior. Some of our actual character units. I just realized my executioner's upstairs. Darn. As you can see, they're definitely big. 
And I'm looking around for my brute now, and I don't know where he is, one of the Vanguard. There's brute. So they're taller, obviously nowhere near as bulky. Grabbing the thick boys for the Nords. Still, you can see, and these guys are pretty big too. Uh, nowhere near the same height. Obviously the weight is a lot more different. And I really just, I dig the look. I really dig the look. And I now wonder if that was, no, uh, I guess it's not the same kind of blade as the Avatar I were carrying. Uh, it makes me just kind of hopeful that we'll see some more expansion in terms of getting these guys their own, I don't know, expansion pieces almost? I don't know. I feel like there's a lot to work with here, and what's on offer, you definitely could come up with, if you wanted to go full on, nothing but Avatara and like have the Highborn leading, you could probably do that, and I know with the mainstay rules, you totally could. Obviously, it would make sense to have plenty of units of the drone guys and some archers to back them up. But to me, this is just such a neat-looking kit. I really would love to see even more of this kind of stuff from the Spires, just because it's so different from what else is out there. And I love the weird faces. They remind me of, like, no masks, or almost reminds me of some kind of, like, Keita Amamiya kaiju monster. Reminds me of his weird proportions. I don't know why they just give me a big Ziram vibe, if you guys are familiar with Ziram. Maybe it's just me. But overall, definitely a cool kit. Uh, I already have ordered myself a Highborn at this point, because I'm like, I gotta have one now. At first I thought she was kind of expensive, but then I realized just how big and bulky these guys are, and she's in a much cooler pose. And believe it or not, this is actually a female one. It does have breasts underneath all that armor. I was kind of surprised about that. Looking at the other ones, that's definitely a flat-chested male. Uh, and I haven't even built the big fancy leader one, so... Uh, overall, I gotta say, cool unit. I just want to see even more. Which, I guess, isn't the most fair assessment of the kit, because it's like... I liked it so much that I want them to take it even farther than they possibly can yet. And I don't think that's a really fair assessment. But, yeah. This is definitely up my alley, and I hope to see the line grow and succeed enough that we can see further avatara be whatever they may be and i'm still waiting on my six arm centaur cavalry dudes too so gotta get on top of that with that said this has been high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching we'll see you back here soon Bye bye